Okay, hello. Excuse the giant Nikon Elements screen. I want to make sure everything is nice and visible. Today we're going to go over just really simply how to set up the Z-Stack. The Z-Stack option is in the ND Acquisition tab. It is this third tab over. As always with any of these tabs, if it is checked, then the system will perform this action when you hit Run Now. If it is unchecked, it will not perform this action. So to set up the Z-Stack, we want to make sure that the box is checked. And we need to now define what we want the system to image. So there are three ways we can image this. So we often default as we default to this sort of blue one. The blue one is you define the top range and you define the bottom range, and it will image in between the range that you define. Your other two options are these orange options. These are both basically that you, sub, you tell it the plane that you would like it to start at, and then you can either image symmetrically or asymmetrically from that point. So like five microns above the point, five microns below the point, in the case of this metal one, or like five microns above the point, two microns below the point for this other one. These two options, we don't use them very much, but if you want to use X, Y, you have to use one of these orange options. Otherwise, we recommend that you do the blue. So how you do this is we are going to hit the live button, make sure it is live scanning because we have to be able to see what we're doing. I'm basically going to manually adjust the focus knob here and go to some point that I define as the end of my range of interest. So we'll say, I don't care about anything beyond this point. We'll say that this is the top of the range I want to image. So Nikon Elements defines what the top and the bottom should be in terms of whether or not the objective is closer to the slide or farther from the slide. But in reality, the software actually does not care whether you abide by these rules. So in general, we say you pick a direction and then you pick the other direction. It doesn't literally have to match their definition of top and bottom. You just have to pick two points. So now that I've defined the top, I'm going to adjust the focus back through the depth of the sample until I get to the other way. It's going to get brighter as it's coming into focus and dimmer as it's going out of focus. And we'll say, I don't care about anything beyond this point. So I define this as my bottom. And this gives me a range of about 9.45 microns. That's pretty normal. Anywhere between, I don't know, 5 and 12 is probably going to be pretty normal for it. Would generally what people are doing. So now that we have this range defined, we now have to tell the software how many pictures we would like to take within this range. So as a general rule, no average user is going to know what that number of images should be. So right here in the center, you have this button here. It says, in this particular case, 0 0.975 microns. This is a calculation that is generated by the system based on your live working settings. In short, on a confocal, every image that you take has a little bit of depth to it. So this calculation will take into account the range that you would like to image and that tiny depth that comes with every image that you take. And it calculates how many images you will have to take and how far apart they will have to be in order for every image to have that sort of optical stacking. So they would stack perfectly on top of each other the images and their depths would not overlap and they will not have any gaps between them. That's what this calculation is trying to tell you. So optimally, based on what you would like to image within and the live working settings that you have, it tells you that you should take an image every 0 0.975 microns and you will end up with 11 pictures. This is a great place to start. You probably would always want to hit this button even if you know that you don't need optical sectioning that is that precise. If you're doing something like co-localization or 3D reconstruction or deconvolution, you always want to go with this recommendation and you also probably are going to want to have a higher magnification. This is only on 20x. You often need to do these sorts of more complex 3D imaging at 40 or 60x. But if you're doing something at a lower mag, and you don't really know how many pictures you would like to take, this is a great suggestion. If you do not need optical sectioning that is this precise, you can take this recommended number and cut it down to suit your needs. 
If you only need to know what's happening between the top and the bottom of your sample, you can have maybe, I don't know, five images. It's up to your discretion with you and your PI. Once you have set all this up, you can hit run now and it will take this image. After it's done, it will take a second to process, and then it will give you your new Z-Stack image. This is a single field image because that's all we did. If we did a large image, the large image would also appear at this point. You have your Z-Steps right here, and you can save it as an ND2, and that's it.